now that you guys have just about everyone back, the, the, you know, the mandatory now, I mean, how much more can you accomplish this week as opposed to OTAs? Um, to, to not too much more. I mean, you know, what, what we've done through the first nine OTAs and what we're going to do over these next two days are very similar. Um, obviously getting, you know, a few few guys uh, back will be big, um, you know, just in terms of being in the meetings and going through our process. But it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel basically like the exact same days that these guys have gone through the last uh, three weeks. Mike, doing so little in the running during these sessions, do you have to wait training camp practices then more heavily towards, towards doing that? Yeah, I mean it's it's always a challenge in uh, in OTAs to get everything you want out of the run games um, or run game, I should say. Uh, last year, I thought we were probably pretty heavy compared to maybe the rest of the league because it's our, our first year and you're just trying to get the targets down and as much of the technique as you can without the pads on. It's, it was really a similar camp uh, that we had in 2019 when we were in San Francisco. Jimmy Garoppolo was coming off his uh, ACL. Uh, we wanted him to be out there, but he was not um, allowed to be out there in the 11-on-11 uh, deals. So uh, we went kind of a, a strict passing camp, you know, for the for the timing element of all that and, and for the fact that we wanted Jimmy to be out there. So uh, we've been through this before, some of us on the staff. It's been very good for, obviously, our, you know, the pass game and Zach's development. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll kind of see where it goes. we, we got a lot of time in August to, to make sure our run game's uh, on point. How would you assess Zach's offseason so far? Uh, yeah, just just improvement. You know, his um, what, what's been cool about him. I know I said some uh, some stuff about him a couple weeks ago, uh, but but just his his focus. You know, his daily focus of of you know what he's trying to get done. Not not trying to to have a laundry list of things each and every day. Hey, let's focus on this one thing, this two things, whatever it might be, and uh, and, and stay dialed into that. And I think Rob Calabrese uh, has has just done awesome at just you know setting kind of the standard and the goals that. That we want to get accomplished each and every day, each and every week, um, and, uh, and and Zach has bought into that. And not that he wouldn't, not that he ever hasn't, but it's just been uh, it's been good. I think he's um, his focus has been in the right spot. Is that a big difference from what like, this time last year? You, you spoke of like a laundry list. Does he did he have to go into last year with a laundry list of things, and now he kind of knows? what he needs to focus on and what not at this point? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's year one for an offense, year one for a staff, year one for a rookie quarterback. There's Not only did he have to learn our terminology and our system, he had to learn just the difference between the college game and the NFL game, and you're trying to simulate that in May and June, which – you know the speed is one thing but then you come back in august now the speed ramps up even a little bit more and then um so just just the fact that he knows what to expect come august come september you don't have to talk about that as much you just try to dial in on what matters right now and that's you know making sure we are mastering our 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 offense and our job as a quarterback you know and uh and that's where i say his mindset and his focus has been um it's been really cool to watch very very different than than last year um in terms of what what I just talked about. Mike, what excited you during the draft process about Reese Hall? And what have you learned about him since he's been here? He's a talented football player. That's that's what excited me about him. I'm, you know, it stood out right when you watched him again. I think I've, I've said that I don't know much about the draft guys until we, we dive into the draft. I don't, I don't get to watch a lot of college football or anything like that. So um, didn't, didn't know much about any of the guys. Then when you popped him on, you, you, you saw uh, that um, that he was a special talent. He's in, in – He's a he's a fluid mover. It's um, he sneaks up on defenders more than I guess you could say. Just watching on tape when you're when you're when you're there in person, um, it's it's just a different movement style um, that that you know uh, guys aren't as used to. I guess you could say. Um, but uh, he's he's done a great job since he's been here. He's he's on top of it. Um, you know, I know Taylor Embry's doing a great job with him, just pushing him uh, of you know what uh, being a running back in in this league is like. When you say sneaks up on, on defenders, what, what can you elaborate? He's he's just he's he's 220 pounds and he's he he covers a lot of yardage when it doesn't look like he's co- co- uh, covering a lot of yardage. He's fast, you know, and so he gets up on people pretty quick. And then he's just such a fluid, big body target that when he makes his move, it's not like a, a smaller, shiftier running back where you have to feel like you have to put it on him. He's a, he's got a big catch radius, and I know the quarterbacks can feel that. And how how are his hands from what you? Uh, good. I thought his hands were were uh, really good um, you know coming out of Iowa State and, and everything that we saw you know from the from the film it's it's held true is Zach wired properly for 
his job and his job in this market in your mind? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, he's he's wired to stay in the moment and stay focused, uh, you know, at, at getting better every single day. So, you know, I – and. He loves this thing, you know, the good and the bad and, and the learning from it and, and showing up every day. When he doesn't have the day that he wants, uh, he can't wait to get back on the field the next day, you know, and that's that's just all you want from all these guys, from the first guy on the roster to the 53rd to the 90. You just want him to show up with the with the right mindset to get better every single day and not worry about all, all the outside noise. And uh, and Zach you know, embodies that. He just wants to get better every single day, and, uh, and I believe he's doing that. What would you say is unique or different about Garrett Wilson? Um, what's unique uh, and different? I mean, he's, I don't know anything about what's unique about him. He's just a versatile, good football player. He understands the game. I think I said this a couple weeks ago. Um, you don't really know how much someone totally loves it at least from a coaching perspective, from the draft process, because you just flat out don't get enough time uh, face-to-face, looking in their eyes, um, you know, on a day-to-day basis. These guys are so coached up on how to handle that pre-draft process that, you know, you gotta you got to go with what, what the scouts are saying. We have to put all our, you know, our resources together and figure that out, but you really, truly don't know until you get them in your building. And, uh, you know, since he's been here, he's just been full throttle trying to learn this system, learn the ins and outs of the league. Um, like I said, he's a unique uh, versatility in terms of you know he could play outside he can play a little bit inside uh, he's got the lower half to separate he's got the hands um, he's going to have to continue just to learn how how uh, much more physical this uh, this this level is you know and that's just going to be especially when we put on the pads and um, you know you go through that daily ringer going against our secondary this is probably the a pretty unique jet situation in terms of you guys have multiple running backs that seem like they can play multiple tight ends that seem like they can play multiple receivers that all seem like they can play so how much of a challenge is it for you to make sure that you're able to feed all of those yeah. guys to keep everyone happy? And also, does it kind of help that these guys are all pretty young so that there's not necessarily egos in the group? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question because, you know, everyone wants to contribute. Everyone wants to to have the ball in their hand and produce to help the team win. Um, I, I do think it'll it'll work itself out organically. I think some some games, some days in training camp, guys are going to have uh, better days than others, you know, and they're going to the ball is just naturally going to find them because the quarterback's going to go through their progression. Um, we have to do a great job as a staff of just making sure that we're checking the boxes, putting these guys through every situation possible so that we get a full evaluation to figure out what we need to do, what's best for, for Baltimore you know, in that week one. So I think to work itself out um you know i've been asked it, it, with with that much talent is it a problem it's it's a very good problem and uh i think it'll it'll work itself out how does, uh, how does Mikhail look uh, he looks good. It was uh, it was good to see him yesterday. Um, saw him just briefly as we were walking. We had a, we had a staff function, uh, so we were able just to, to dap him up, give him a big hug, and ask him about his uh, his child. And um, I'm, I'm sure uh, I don't know if he's got you know media availability or whatnot, but I asked him like I think we all would as as new parents how the baby's sleeping, and he just kind of gave the laugh like uh, like all dads would. And um, so it was it was good to see him, and I know that he's going through his process right now. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll be on the field out there today. He'll be uh, with our performance staff, and, and Sal will be able to give kind of more of an update on you know as we go through the process. Mike, with Makai and George, how um, is uh, how are you dividing that? I mean, the competition. You know, Robert said I think it was at the Senior Bowl where he said there was like a competition at left tackle. Is that still where it stands now, or how do you see using each? Of yeah, it, I kind of said it a couple weeks ago too. You know, I mean, it'll. That, that stuff always plays itself out. You know, we got a lot of, lot of work, uh, you know, coming in training camp again. We don't got the pads on right now. We got two more days of mini camp, which is really our OTA practices. Uh, there is no run game. Um, that stuff will work itself out. With, like like uh, Coach Salas said, you know, back after the season, George has earned the right uh, to, to, you know, go to left and, and compete there. But, again, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. The, uh, the best two are going to be slotted um, where they may be, and that will work itself out. Mike, I know you you say it's, it's, it's going to work itself out, but any offensive coordinator or coach that has the same five offensive linemen playing together for a substantial amount of time, all of those guys continually say how much of the continuity is key and how much of a benefit it is to have the same five guys together you know, week after week, year after year. So do you want to have those two positions ironed out pretty quick that this is our left tackle, this is our left yeah, tackle? Yeah, totally. I mean, the, the faster that you can uh, you know, stamp – 
hey, this is what we feel like is going to be a best going into week one versus Baltimore. Uh, you know, the faster we can do that, the better. Um, I think it will play itself out, you know, fairly quickly in terms of when we get back, it's, you know, we're rolling. <laughs> we're running the football and, um, you know, we're going to see at every single position, not just the tackle, but there's a lot of positions. Based off the question you just asked with, with the tight ends and the running backs and the receivers, I mean, all those guys want to contribute. I want to get them all out on the field. They all want to be on the field, but ultimately there can only be five skill positions out there at a time, you know, so that'll, it'll all play itself out. It's going to be, um, what you want in an NFL building is you want competition. You want that in any building, right, at, at, at any level. Uh, the more competition you, you can get, uh, obviously it's going to be a little bit more stress on the particular player, but that stress is a good thing. The guys that can battle through that and come to work and compete every day are only going to get themselves better, obviously, but in turn it's going to make the Jets better. Mike, you didn't get much of Becton, obviously, last year. What does a healthy guy Becton bring to your offense, whatever side he plays on, and how does he fit into your blocking scheme? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a... Uh He's a very large man that is hard to run around in the pass game. And then he's got, for being such a, a big man, he's got a, a great first step to get on players and, and move them, you know, in the run game. So he is, um, it, you know, our scheme or any other scheme, he's he's got the talent because of that, just that elite God-given size that and, and strength that he has, you know. So, you know, the the, the thing for Makai is, uh, you know, just for him, just putting himself in the best situation for for him, uh, you know, going forward. I think it's like getting into the weeds a little bit too deep, so I apologize. But if you have two, can you have two guys competing at left tackle in training camp, like George and Makai, and then at the end of training camp? decide a winner and then move the other like what happens to the right tackle the yeah no out? I mean you're you know you're gonna mix and match that and we'll we'll work that out as a staff I'm not going to get too too much in the particulars of how that's going to go but uh you know we have a plan as a staff right now um you know Sala might or, or might may not uh, get more info on that but uh you know we, we feel confident in in you know um, what we're going to do at the tackle position but again all those positions uh you know AVT was a, a left guard uh, all last year and, you know, just like that, it was, yeah, I can play right guard, you know, and you want that versatility amongst the group. So left tackle, right tackle, for sure, everyone would like to be at one spot, but these guys are talented enough where, uh, you know, we can figure it out, but we have to, you know, make sure that uh, we do it the right way. Like with, with Mims, Salas Price is coming in, in shape and things a few times, but how has he done in terms of the things that maybe you guys didn't see last year from him in terms of knowing the offense, route running, those types of things? Yeah, no, he's um, – I believe I said this a few weeks ago, uh, but uh, just echoing what Salah said, and I think you guys can see it. He's, I can't speak for how he was at Baylor or, or his first year here. I can just speak for what I see right now, and he is in the best shape that I have ever seen him uh, and, and his teammates have ever seen him. Um, so it's been really cool. He he went to work this offseason. He got his body right. You know, we know the um, – the, uh, uh, the, the situation he had last year with OTA with the with the uh, uh, stomach virus and all that kind of stuff or the food poisoning so he's um, he's been able to obviously not have any of that and, and put himself out on the field uh, on that grass every day to get better uh, I love the energy he's he's approached with every single day in the meeting rooms um, he's he's been he, he's he's much more confident in the offense to to the point that we can be in the meeting rooms and he's going to speak up and you know uh, give his answers and, and stuff like that so it's been cool he's putting himself in the best situation for himself uh, to be as successful as he can. What's um what's the next step for Elijah Moore? His progression. Elijah's cool. Um, he's uh, the, you know he looked at me straight in the eye uh, right after the year last year and said, I want to be the best. And he means it, you know, and, and he puts in that work. Uh, for him, it's just going to be that daily grind when we get back. Obviously, I, I'm not worried about Elijah at all over these next 40 days. we got two more days here, obviously. But after that, uh, you know, guys go their own ways, and, and we, we've all seen it go one way or the other. I'm not worried about Elijah. Elijah's going to come in tip-top shape, and it's really just him just fine-tuning his game, being so on it from a uh, playbook standpoint that all he has to do is just worry about you know being the best route runner being the best blocker and, and just putting himself in the situations to be successful um he's had a great camp uh he's a great kid um so i'm excited to see what he can do